I recently put a poll on the Facebook group called Florists on Farms asking people whether or not they would be raising their prices for Mother's Day. 60% of respondents said no. Then I replicated this poll on my personal YouTube community tab and found that similarly, 68% of people were also not planning on raising prices. So that was a little bit surprising to me that so many people said that they wouldn't be raising prices. Now, when I reflect back on my first two years of flower farming, I also did not raise my prices. I didn't want to seem like an opportunist on this major floral holiday, but I also just didn't have the confidence and I didn't even know what flowers I would have on this really mistimed holiday for most of us in the Northern Hemisphere. So for those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Jesse. I am entering to my third year of flower farming. I typically focus my YouTube videos on the business side of things. And today we are going to talk about why we are all missing out on a big opportunity by keeping our prices flat for Mother's Day. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go find a piece of paper and a pen, pause this video, find it, and then write on that piece of paper the number, the price that you were planning on offering your Mother's Day bouquets, arrangements, whatever it is at. And then we're gonna revisit that piece of paper later. One of the things that we're gonna talk about in this video are hidden costs, hidden business costs, storage costs, labor costs that might actually be impacting our profitability for Mother's Day and making it actually less profitable than other times of year if we're keeping our prices flat. What if I told you that a lot of local wholesalers increase their prices on Mother's Day? So what that means is that the cost of buying a bloom for the week leading up to Mother's Day is going to be at a premium compared to other parts of the year. And that makes sense because Mother's Day is the biggest floral holiday. So there is a significant increase in the demand for blooms, which is ultimately going to drive up the price. So what that means is that if you are someone who is sourcing in flowers like a florist, you are going to be forced to increase your prices or else you're probably not going to be profitable. So that's why florists increase their prices on Mother's Day. But let's say that you are a grower who doesn't need to bring in any flowers. So in that case, why should you increase the prices? Well, here's the thing. Are you holding things like tulips that might have been opening up in the field about a month ago and you've put them in your fridge, even if it's been for two weeks? There are cooling costs and holding costs that are associated with us when we are holding blooms for a particular event or holiday. So I myself had tulips that were basically already about three and a half weeks ago. I had published a video up here talking about when to store with bulb on versus bulb off. I typically do not like to store with bulb on because not only does it take up more space in my cooler, I don't have a walk-in cooler, I have a normal refrigerator, but it also takes a lot more time for me to process those stems when I am ready to rehydrate them and clean them. So because I was about three and a half, four weeks out from Mother's Day, I had to store my tulips with the bulb on in order to have a better vase life for those blooms. Now. I need to count the fact that I have extra cooling costs and the labor costs associated with those tulips. So inherently, the prices of all of my arrangements need to go up. The other thing is that I am also going to be sourcing some local flowers from those at my cooperative. And although our growers did not increase the prices per stem for this major holiday, we typically price on the higher end of wholesale anyway. So I am bringing in blooms that typically designers are using for events where they can upcharge. I'm gonna be selling at a farmer's market. So I have a limit in terms of how much extra I can charge, but I need to also be mindful that if I'm bringing in these premium wholesale blooms that I am charging adequately for me to make a profit. Another thing to consider is that there is typically more work, more stress, involved with prepping for a major floral holiday, which is similar to preparing for an event like a wedding or a shower. So demand, again, goes through the roof, which means that you will probably get pre-orders, whether or not you ask for them or not, if you've even been around for a year. I've already gotten people asking me, hey, I like to reserve bouquets, and I haven't even put an offering out there. The point is that there is going to be demand from people who are your regulars, 
as well as people who have been sitting on the sidelines. And obviously, there's going to be time and effort needed to prepare for that. The other thing that I want to talk about is the state of the blooms that the flowers need to be in when it arrives for the mother on Mother's Day. You need to have blooms that are quite open and looking really, really full for the arrangement, but they can't be so far along that your arrangement isn't going to get good vase life. So if you think about something like a wedding, one of the reasons why florals for weddings are priced higher, if you exclude the labor and the effort and all the time that goes into just having florals for a wedding, is the fact that the blooms need to be in a specific state on that day. They need to be at their prime and they need to be looking at their best. So the timing of the blooms and getting enough stems at that stage with consistent quality is a factor in that premium pricing. So that is really no different for us on Mother's Day, right? Like you can't really use stems that aren't ready and you can't use stems that are too past their prime. So you need to have a number or a high volume of good looking stems that are going to maximize the wow factor when mom gets it, but also maximize the amount of vase life that you can get from blooms in that state. So you might be putting in blooms that are just getting ready to open, blooms that are probably a little bit more open, right? The point is you're gonna have to have a mix and you're gonna have, have to have a plan for making sure that all the arrangements that go out the door look like that. We should absolutely be charging a premium for that because that not only takes time, effort, it also takes us finding the right blooms for that. Here's the thing. Even if you are a newer grower and you feel like you have a lot of blooms coming on and you're wondering, can I actually sell these for Mother's Day? I'm gonna tell you, you're probably gonna sell out for Mother's Day. It's not uncommon for our local grocery stores to basically run out of flowers and basically panicked partners or loved ones looking for flowers at the last hour or last minute. So what I'm here to say is you will be selling out. Now, in the world of economics 101, there is a supply demand curve, which is a fancy way of saying that if you sell out of your flowers in 17 minutes, like I did at the farmer's market last year on Mother's Day, you price them to low, right? There's this sweet spot where you maximize the amount that you're charging something and you maximize the amount of volume that comes with that. So I wanna talk about this a little bit more because I know that it could be really uncomfortable for people with an established, a uh, loyal base of customers to suddenly upcharge a arrangement that you would have sold for $20 before and suddenly sell it for like $30. That might feel very opportunistic. And I totally understand that you don't want your customers to feel like you're taking advantage of them on this floral holiday. So let's talk about a couple of alternatives. One alternative is to create a more premium offering. This is the route that most people actually take. So typically, for example, I sell $20 bouquets. I would therefore be offering a more premium bouquet at, we'll call it $35. This would feel definitely more luxurious. It would feel more full than a $20 one and it would feel more giftable. So what you could do in this case is you can limit the amount of $20 bouquets that you have and have more of that $35 offering to kind of nudge people into that direction or so that if you sell out of the $20 bouquets, people don't really have an option but to go up and they know that there was a $20 alternative earlier. The second thing you can do is just add value added features. So Mother's Day is a very giftable type of holiday. People are typically looking to have ready to gift florals. So something like a wrap may not actually feel giftable. You might want to put that bouquet into something like a vase, like a nice vase. I'm, I'm not talking about dollar store vases. I'm talking about like a nicer vase. So you can buy in a vase for, we'll call it like seven, eight dollars. And then you can upcharge that vase the double of price, right? Value at $15, $20, and then put another $20 worth of flowers in there. And now you've got yourself a $40 to $50 arrangement that you can easily charge. Now the customer is going to be happy paying that extra money because again, it is ready to be gifted. Think about all of the partners, 
all of the kids, all of the loved ones who don't have the time or the capability to take something like a wrap and make it feel more giftable. If you wanna stay away from vases, you can use something like tissue paper, ribbon to elevate the bouquet, and you should definitely charge a premium for the extra time and materials that you are spending on that. And you should definitely charge more than just cost, right? You should, you should really charge that at a premium and think about if this person were to walk into a florist, what would that florist be charging and what would that person be willing to pay? And use that as a baseline for how much you should be charging for your florals. Now, I say use that as a baseline because obviously when you go into a florist's shop, there is the design element, the artistry that is also being factored into their arrangements. If you don't have that kind of experience, you probably can't charge as high as what a florist does. But what I'm really trying to say here is don't completely undercharge like what I typically see. Now, the other thing to consider is just where are you gonna be selling your Mother's Day flowers? So. I will actually be selling at a farmer's market. I have been invited back to guest vend on that day. That happened to me last year. The main difference is this time I was given more of a heads up notice. Last year I was given notice about two days before and I was just under one and a half months postpartum. So it was kind of a crazy time. I hadn't even started pumping yet and I was breastfeeding. So I did not maximize that day because of all of those factors. But this year with two weeks of lead time, I really want to maximize that day. Now I bring up the farmer's market because although I will definitely be having people who are visiting me from last year who are used to buying from me and know what I charge, this is a day where you're going to attract a lot of new people who typically don't buy flowers at all. Remember, these are people who are gifting florals because I guess it's the thing to do on Mother's Day, right? Or their moms really love flowers. So therefore, they're not used to what you've charged before. If you're selling at a farmer's market, a farm stand, a store, I would encourage you to think beyond the fact that it's probably going to be about 20% of your repeat customers coming to buy and 80% of these new customers who have no baseline for what you've been selling before. And that really should not hold you back from raising prices should you feel the need to because of extra holding, cooling costs, or having to bring in extra flowers. I wanna leave you with something powerful that someone said in the Facebook group where I originally put the poll up. She said, this is the day of the year where we can finally sell our flowers for what they are worth and not get any customer pushback. I love that. So don't waste that opportunity. If you've been wanting to tiptoe into elevated design and see how much you can get for those arrangements on the high end, this is your chance to do it. I mean, we were talking about the difference between having a original sales goal of $500 by not increasing our prices and then getting potentially $700 for those same amount of flowers. Think about what that extra money can do for your business if you reinvested back into that. Florists are doing it, other people are doing it. You should not feel guilty about doing that. I also wanna say that when I originally posted this poll, I didn't have as many options. The admin and fellow YouTuber Marie, who is a florist, a former florist, and now also farming, and she focuses more on high-end elevated designs, she had to put in a fifth option for me, which is 50 to 75% increase. She added that in there because that's how much she upcharges her arrangements. And she was definitely a bit surprised by the fact that most other growers don't increase their prices at all. I also went back to Lenny Larkin, who I recently interviewed to ask, what does she do for her farm stand during Mother's Day? And she said that she would offer a more premium bouquet in addition to her normal one, but have higher quantities of that premium bouquet so that when she sold out of her normally priced bouquet, all that was left was more premium bouquet and that was a way of making her repeat customers feel like that they weren't being upcharged, but also uh, giving her an opportunity to maximize the sales from the floral holiday. So if you've made it this far in this video, I want to know in the comments, on that piece of paper that you wrote on, what was your original number and was I successful in getting you to reconsider increasing your prices? And if so, what does that new price look like? I would personally love to know and I know that other viewers watching this video would also love to know. I will be dropping a video probably late Sunday evening of how I did at the farmer's market for Mother's Day. But in the meantime, if you wanna see how I did last year at the farmer's market on Mother's Day, here's a link to that video and I'll see you on Sunday.